Yeah, we got John Kasman in the house. What's yeah. up, brother? What's going on? Oh, What's going man, on? How's so everybody doing? I'm pumped up to hear what you have to say to talk shop on capital raising, anything else. I've given these guys full autonomy to talk about anything that they want to. John, how the heck are you, brother? Listen, I'm great, but I, I can't start with me. I got to give it up to my man, Tyler. What a great presentation yeah. he just walked through. This dude had no notes and just riff for like 20 minutes straight with just straight mindset on raising capital. So big kudos to my man, Tyler, on that. We Yeah, man, Tyler is amazing. <laughs> Definitely connect with him. John, what is, so what are we going to be chatting about today? I've given you autonomy to talk about whatever you want to. What are your thoughts on what you're going to discuss today? Yeah, so we're, we're going to go over the three C's to attracting capital. So I've got a presentation I'll walk you through. But in short, you know, Tyler gave a lot of great information on mindset. And I think mindset is really critical. And we'll get into that a little bit. But um, my, I'm a firm believer that there are uh, a couple of components that every successful syndicator, capital raiser, they embody. And they're what we call the three C's. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. No, I mean, tear it up, brother. We're I think we're Absolutely. ready for you. <laughs> Vinky, if you could let me share my screen, that would help. Awesome. Excellent. Let's jump into this. All right. I know we got a, a very nice tight window. So let's get into this real quick. All right. First and foremost, you know, Ruben introduced me. I appreciate that. Um, before we get into me, I got to ask, what concerns do you have about raising capital for deals? If you could go into the chat box and just put in any questions, any concerns, that you have. Uh, while we have this time, I want to make sure I'm very mindful and understand some of the specific challenges that you are facing or that you have concerns with. So just go ahead and raise and drop that. Is it, you know, that you're going to call them up short, that you don't have friends or family, you don't know people with money, you know, uh, what is it? Just put that in the chat box. All right. Having the time and systems to care for people. Man, that's a good one. Finding new investors outside your network, not having a ton of experience. Yep. <clears throat> Coming up short with the raise, don't know people with money. Yes. Investor market perceptions coming up short. Investors don't like your deals. Yes. Okay. All right. Calling them at the wrong time. Finding lots of investors to invest with me. I love it. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Hey, keep putting those in there. This is very helpful. And that gives me a little context of where to take the conversation. So while we're going through that, let me tell you a little bit about me, okay? My name's John Kasman, as Ruben mentioned. Uh, my background's in corporate America. So I was a former marketing executive. I worked at General Motors. I worked at an advertising agency working on clients like Nike, Coors Light, Mountain Dew, and other brands. And personally, I built a portfolio of 13 units valued at over $1.5 million. The challenge for me, just like a lot of other people, is I kept running out of my own money. So we'll talk about how I solved that in just a moment. Um, I've helped regular everyday people invest in over $100 million worth of apartments. I also host the number one rated multifamily podcast called Multifamily Insights. I've got an event in Chicago called the Midwest Real Estate Networking Summit. And as uh, Ruben mentioned, I'm also a coach and a mentor to other multifamily investors. Uh, I'm based in Cincinnati, Ohio now. I used to live in Chicago, but I live in Cincinnati now. Um you know, my pain points are really, really simple here. You know, um, I mentioned I was a full-time marketing executive. I worked at GM. Well, guess what? I worked at GM when it went through bankruptcy. <laughs> the agency I worked at, it also closed up shop and went through bankruptcy and kind of reemerged as a new entity. Um, I had a hard time, you know, getting the capital together. And I knew I couldn't rely on my W-2 job forever. Um, I started to get some traction in real estate. But as I mentioned, I kept running out of money. And Probably like many of you, I didn't have a bunch of rich family members or friends who were happy to write me multi-million dollar checks to fund my endeavors. So I needed to figure out how to make this happen. Um, do you might want to guess what I did? Uh, well, I didn't hit the lotto. That, that's not what happened. Uh, I did not hit the lotto. <laughs> but the way you make it happen is, of course, you learn to attract capital. OK, so that's what we're going to talk about here is attracting capital uh, for these deals. And I mentioned that word attract capital. I know this is a raising capital mastermind, but uh, I actually prefer the word attract because attracting is more inbound. You know, attracting is people raising their hand coming to you because they want to be a part of what you've got going on. 
Raising is more outbound. That's more you re picking up the phone, calling people. Tyler just mentioned knowing who to call. And this is really important. When you have people reaching out to you, it becomes much easier. Think of having any kind of business. It's easier if people are walking into your business saying, hey, I'm looking to buy that product or service you offer versus you not having any customers and having a cold call or just guess and hopefully get somebody who is interested in buying. You have no idea who you're talking to on the outbound or the inbound. These people have already indicated that they're interested in your product or service. So that's why I want to focus more on attracting versus raising. So let's get into the three C's of attracting capital. They are credibility, confidence, and connections. Okay. We're going to break each one of these down. The first myth though, that comes when it comes to credibility though, is that in order to be credible, you need prior experience. I saw somebody put something like that in the chat, right? There's a, an, another notion, which I just hate. And they say, well, if you don't have it, just fake it till you make it. I think that's a terrible idea too, okay? Here's the reality. The way you actually built credibility is you built an A-class team. Now, you have whatever experience you have, but the people around you, your property managers, the brokers, uh, your mentors, advisors, partners, all of these people have experience. So if you can build an A-class team, you can now leverage the experience of the group as a whole, as opposed to maybe the limited experience that you possess. Even when you're talking to investors, that's what they want to see, that you've built a world-class team so that they're going to lift you up in whatever you're doing. You want to be professional. You want to be transparent. Uh, Tyler talked about the energy, right? People see that. Either you're prepared and you have that energy, you're confident in what you're doing, you can communicate what you know and what you need to look into, but you're going to present yourself in a very professional manner. manner. By doing that, that helps build your credibility. You may not have success as a real estate investor at this point, but you should have some other successes you can point to. Again, you need to look at your corporate career. For me, I could look at my time at General Motors and coming out of bankruptcy and helping to lead Buick to be one of the fastest growing brands in America. Me winning awards for some of the marketing and advertising campaigns that I've done. I was recognized as uh, one of the top advertisers and marketers in Black Enterprise Magazine. So I have these wins that I can rely on. And as I'm talking to the people I know about investing in real estate, they can see that I'm a credible business person. I'm a credible marketer. I'm a credible business professional. And that will translate into other worlds, just like real estate investing. And then the last thing is you want to be knowledgeable and you also want to take your time and build some trust. Okay. Whoops. Let's talk about confidence. Um, there's a myth that some people are just really good at putting themselves out there and being confident. You know, they just wake up with it. Whatever it is, they just have it, right? Uh, the other thing, the other myth there is that you really can't be confident your first time doing something. So it's natural to feel a little bit more timid or a little bit more scared. Um, but those are myths. And the reason is you built confidence by first and foremost, educating yourself. Ruben's put together a great platform right here where you can come talk to other people, learn, ask questions, figure out exactly what you're struggling with and attack it, learn, grow, figure out how to solve those things. More importantly, become resourceful. You are never going to know the answer to every single question that someone's ever going to ask you. But if you can become resourceful to know where to get those answers, you're going to feel empowered and you're going to feel confident. Preparation is what builds confidence. This picture in the background here is Kobe Bryant in the gym. Kobe Bryant uh, used to shoot 500 shots every single day. He didn't have to make 500 shots. He just had to take 500 shots. And that gets into focusing on results, you know, focus on the weak spots and don't focus on the results because if you focus on the outcome, well, now your success is tied to that outcome as opposed to the process. If you focus on the process, you're going to commit to that. Uh, James Clear has a book, Atomic Habits, and he talks about the most successful people are those who build systems and processes, right? If your goal is to lose 10 pounds and all you're focused on is 10 pounds, you're going to have a hard time. Even if you succeed, you're going to have, hard, have a hard time keeping those 10 pounds off versus if you create a system and process to eat healthy, to identify the right foods for your body, to make sure you're taking time to work out. If you create systems and process and triggers to do those things, you're going to be much more likely to not just lose those 10 pounds, but to be able to keep that off and make a lifestyle change. So that's how you build confidence, right? You've got to focus on the efforts that it takes and make sure that you are educating yourself and talking to investors. The last C is connections, okay? When it comes to connections, two big myths here. One is that you should start with friends and family. The second is that you cannot attract new investors until you have some experience. Now, I do think there's some truth to starting with friends and family, but I would argue and I would tell you that friends and family are not 
your target. Many of them are your friends or family. They may not have the money. They may not care anything about real estate. Sure, they love you, but they don't have a, the same passion and interest. One or two of them may, but not the group as a whole. So instead of focusing on your friends and family, what I would ask you to do is the same thing you would do if you're launching any other business. If I'm launching a bakery, I'm not going to go to my grandmother or my aunt and say, hey, I've got this bakery. I need you to buy a couple sheet cakes of, of cake. Instead, I'm going to say, hey, I've got this bakery. Here's my ideal client. Do you know anybody who is having a large event, right? Uh, anniversary, uh, graduation party, birthday party, wedding, anyone you know having one of those things, I would love to give them a sample and see if they would let me make their cake uh, for that big celebration. You want to use your network to help you expand your network, right? So talk to your friends and family, tell them what you're doing, and then tell them who the ideal investor is for you. Maybe that's a person looking for cash flow. Maybe it's someone who's moved jobs recently and is looking to stash away some extra money. Maybe it's someone who doesn't want their money tied into the stock market and wants to diversify. Maybe it's someone who already believes in real estate and as a single family rental, but maybe wants to uh, release some of that headache so they're not being the landlord themselves. But figure out who your target consumer is or your target investor is and let your friends and family know who those individuals are, okay? As you're doing that, you are gonna expand your network even before you do your first deal. Uh, the three C's, just to recap here, it's credibility. That's why focusing on your previous ones. Confidence, that comes from preparation and practice. And then the last one is connections, which comes about people and solving problems. If you can do those three things, you'll set yourself up to attract capital for your deals. Now, there are three other C's that I would like to talk about. Don't have the time today to get into it, uh, but they are channel, communication, and consistency. And this starts to get into the system, right? The systematic approach to attracting capital on a reliable basis, creating kind of different channels, making sure you tighten up your communication or your messaging, but then also being consistent with that delivery. Uh, Ruben, if it's okay, I just wanted to share a couple of resources for folks to either learn more about me and, and try to learn more about ways that we can help people. Uh, the first is we've got a sample deal on our website. You can download that at casmancapital.com slash sample deal. Uh, the second, Ruben alluded to our podcast, Multifamily Insights. It's available anywhere you listen to podcasts. And then the last is we do have a department investing mastermind. If you just go to the website, casmancapital.com slash mastermind, you can learn more about that right there. Thank you, guys. Boom. That was amazing. Show, <laughs> I see a bunch of loves going up, lots of hearts. If you guys like John's presentation and you guys like what you guys are seeing so far, put in emojis, clap hands, whatever you like, likes, hearts. This has been fantastic. With that, I'm going to turn it over to the transition host. I think that's Camila for this one. Is that correct? Are you going to do questions for John? Well, First, you're going to do questions for John. <laughs> oh, I get to do questions for John. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So everybody, I've got a question for John. Post it in the Q&A. But thanks so much, John. That was super awesome. Uh, you gave some really great tips for newbies too, right? Like, so, so there was a question earlier that we didn't get to that someone said, well, what if I am brand new? What's my first step? What would you say? Yeah, listen, your first step is this. Okay. If you're brand new, um, one, I would take a personal audit. What's your background? What's your experience? What's your knowledge level? Um, if you've, if you've never invested in real estate at all, I think the first thing is to focus on both your education, but also building up your credibility. And by doing that, I mean, you need to align yourself with someone who has more experience that could be either a partner, mm -hmm. or I would strongly advise you to get a mentor or advisor. But the reality is, especially if you're talking about larger commercial real estate, you don't want to go into that with a team with zero experience. Like that's not going to make anybody feel good. So align yourself with someone else who has that experience um, and that's going to help. The other pathway, to be honest with you, is do it as an LP. Invest as a passive investor and then share what you're doing as an LP. The same way you hear guys talk about their stock investments, right? Oh, I just invested in this stock, blah, 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 right? If you're having a great time and you invest in a deal and you're crushing it and you're sharing that with people, the only thing you need to add is to say, hey, man, the next time I find an opportunity like this, would you be interested in joining me or would you like to learn more? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. If you're investing in a deal, you can say, yeah, just invest in this 200 unit deal. I'm getting an 8 percent prep return. I've got this great upside, feeling good with it. If they're asking questions and learning more and you can just say, yeah, man, well, listen, I'm, I'm going to keep looking at different deals. Uh, the next time I find one, do you want to you want me to share some information with you? Right. And that's a great way to pivot that where you're not putting all that pressure on yourself to be kind of the lead operator. 
Yeah, I love it. That's exactly how I started. Like step one for me was investing passively, right? Getting my feet wet, understanding what it's like to be an LP and understanding what it's like to invest with someone and analyze the deal and those questions. And the step two, align myself with a uh, an experienced operator and just lean on those partners to say, you know, so if you're talking to an investor like, well, have you done this before? You say, yeah, well, not yeah, but you say my partners and I have you know, all of this, this experience. And so you can lean on that partnership to really, to really go there. Okay. Here's an Absolutely. interesting question for you. Can any disc personality type raise successfully? Absolutely. So uh, people would be shocked, but uh, I am not really an extroverted person. And most people don't believe that, but it's true. And, and that comes down to how you get your energy, right? So when the disc is a little bit of a different profile, um, but you know, I get the general the general disc thing, right? So the short answer is yes, right? The thing that is really important, though, is you do need to understand that this is about relationships. So if you are more of an engineering type mindset and it's about the numbers and the figures, then you want to make sure you're you're doing that and you're putting that in front of people. But it's less about you and more about the other people you're talking to. And you want to make sure you're presenting information to them in a way that allows them to process it based on their own personality type. So when I'm talking to engineers, they drill me on the numbers, right? They drill me on the risk factors, the numbers. Hey, you got a 17.2, blah, blah, blah in here. They go off on that, right? When I'm talking to people who are a bit more you know, relationship-based, they may not even look in the numbers. They they just want to know, hey, are you investing in the deal, right? Mm -hmm. Or, or yeah. how well do you know these guys? How well do you know the people you're working with, right? They're more relationship driven. So if they just want to strengthen, like, John, I want to make sure you really believe in this. And if so, okay, great, I'm with you. So it depends on the person. But yes, anyone can, can raise money. Um, what I would say is how you do it and how you build your systems needs to be tailored to you. So I can go on a podcast and that works really, really well for me. I can do this. That worked well for me. There's some people who love networking in person. I can do that. I'll be honest. I'm not the best in-person networker and I'm okay with that. I'll, I'm the guy who goes in a room and I will sit there hoping someone comes up to me versus, I mean, there are people I see crush it. They go in any room anywhere in the world and they just start shaking hands with everybody. I, that's just not my style, right? Um, so if you're more shy, what I would say is, how can you communicate most effectively? Maybe it's writing, maybe it's creating videos, maybe it's doing an analysis, but everyone can absolutely raise capital. You just have to figure out how you communicate the best way. Yeah. You and I should be friends. I'm the same. My first real estate conference I went to, I walked in, got overwhelmed by the thousand people and walked right back out. <laughs> I couldn't do it. <laughs> like, uh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but absolutely. Like, you know, I, I have been able to be successful raising yeah. as a, as a, I would call myself a pretty, pretty big introvert, you know, but you, you attract people who are similar to you, right. Who, who are similar and, you know, and introverts are deep thinkers. And so that's who I talk to. And that's the, you know, the type of investor that I, that is ideal for me is a, uh, you know, is that, is that introverted person. Um, well, thank you so much, John, for joining us today. It's super awesome value. I, um, you know, put your contact information in the chat yeah. as well. So people can connect with you. Um, they, you, yeah, you've added so much value and we truly appreciate you being here. Absolutely. Well, listen, thank you for having me. Uh, again, I'll put my information in the chat there. Feel free to go to the website or shoot me an email. And thank you for having me. And listen, you've got a great jam-packed three hours here of information. So I'll hang on a little bit longer. Uh, but appreciate you all having me on today. Take care, everybody. Perfect. Thanks, John.